How do you think the egg's gonna be? I'm praying. You only have one chance, unfortunately. Okay, guys, you need to be rolling out that dough. Not too thick, not too thin. If the uh, pasta dough is too thick, then it's gonna be tough. If it's too thin, it won't support all the ingredients that are inside. Look at Kayla, she's got her noodles coming out. I'm telling you, man, it's anyone's game right now. Where's Brooke at right now? She's just doing her filling. Brooke's gonna fall though. apart. It's called a pressure test for a reason, so uh, I just gotta keep calm and stay focused, and I'll be okay. Oh, she cut herself too. I cut myself. I am freaking out. She's Brooke's done at this point, for sure. The home cooks are fighting for their lives in the first MasterChef Canada pressure test. You need to be filling your raviolo by now. And Eric needs one perfectly separated egg yolk for his pasta filling. Drain the whites through your fingers. But so far, he's managed to drop them all. Now, he must try and salvage his last intact yolk from his container of discarded shells. Oh, no, it's safe. It's, it's not broken. broken. Oh, oh, yes. There you go, Eric. Beautiful, Eric. Oh, he got it, he got it, he got it. Yeah, he got, he got it, he got one. it. Got one. Have a nice bath. Two minutes! You have two minutes left. Your raviolo should be in the water cooking by now. You should be finishing off your sauce and getting ready to plate. If they overcook the noodle, that means the egg inside will be solid. And that defeats the entire purpose of this dish, because the wow factor lies in that egg being very liquidy. Oh, my God. I wonder how many have actually made a crispy fried sage leaf. Ten, nine, wipe the plate. Seven, wipe the plate. Five, come on, four, three, two, one! Heads up! Heads up! Overall, I'm pretty confident about the pressure test because Kayla's in there. I honestly believe that she'll be the worst. Kayla? Hello, Chef. Nice presentation, and I see you have some shaved Parmigiano on top. Yes, Chef. Well done. How did the crispy sage turn out for you? I get a little crunch. Well done. Let's try the big test. Does that make you happy? That makes me really happy. <laughs> the egg was very nice. So was the pasta. But not bad for a first time out. I can feel that's good pasta. I mean, just with a knife. It's everything that needs to be in this dish here. Ingredient-wise, yes, Chef. Where's the Parmesan cheese? Brooke, how do you feel about your dish? Um, <clears throat> I definitely felt the pressure in that pressure test. So as you can see, I didn't have a chance to get that piece of sage fried. Maybe a little Parmesan cheese missing? How do you think the egg's gonna be? I'm praying. That works. I feel the dough is a little on the thick side, and therefore a tad underdone. Better not dead in there. Less is more. Agreed, Chef. I hope that I can get my nerves under control and show you what I can really do in the kitchen. You only have one chance, unfortunately. It's dead. This shoe pastry looks like a soup. Oh my god. My shoe paste didn't stick for some reason, didn't work. Ugh. Take a breath, Andy. It just didn't work. This is an integral piece to my entire main course. So I'm making this shoe pastry again. You're gonna get this, you got this, you got this, you got this. I don't know if he's got time for that. 
If this shoe pastry doesn't work, I am going to lose this finale, for sure. Hustle, hustle. You guys this. While the judges were tasting, the cooks have been pressing ahead with the entrees. I'm making an East Coast lobster roll with a compressed shoe paste as the bun, salt and vinegar potato chips, and a Tidal Bay Sauvignon. To get started in the lobster, I'm doing a quick blanch on the tails and then break them out of the shells. Next up, I'm placing my lobster tails into a backpack, and then I add in tarragon, butter, a white wine, salt. The lobster roll is Nova Scotia, and I'm so excited to be able to elevate this so that the judges love it too. Luke, through. Come on, Taya, push. This is the most time-consuming thing on the planet. My main is a sous vide venison loin with a poblano mole and a pepita verde, which is sunflower seeds and a ton of herbs. I need to trust my venison because I really want them to look like beautiful medallions. She's added so many tricks to her bag since her previous season. It's great to see. Taya just browned her venison. Now she's putting it into the vacuum packed bag. So it's basically swimming in butter to get that flavor, that fat that it needs, and it's to die for. These Miele vacuum sealing bags are perfect for sous vide cooking. They preserve flavor, texture, and color. And I have to make the sauces. There's a lot to do. Guys, 30 minutes. Just a little bit more. I'm doing a duck breast with a smoked tea egg in a taro nest. Duck breast takes a long time to cook because of the huge fatty layer. And the only way you're gonna get a nice crispy skin is if you cook it down and render all the fat out of it. I'm trying to make a jus right now with my leftover duck pieces. I'm loving watching Chris right now. Almost there. 20 minutes! Only 20 minutes left! I'm a little stressed out right now. Jeez, a bomb went off here. Next up, I start working on the shoe pastry for my lobster roll. Shoe pastry can be very tricky. If it's too cold and you add the eggs, the eggs won't mix in well, and it'll affect the light, fluffy texture. That's not how it's supposed to look. Oh, this shoe pastry looks like a soup. Oh, my god. My shoe paste didn't stick for some reason. Didn't work. Ah. Take a breath, Andy. It just didn't work. This is an integral piece to my entire main course. So I'm making the shoe pastry again. You're going to get this. You got this. You got this. You got this. I don't know if he's got time for that. If this shoe pastry doesn't work, I am going to lose this finale, for sure. Andy's doing the right thing by restarting it. You're going to get this. You got this. You got this. So I just take a deep breath, get back in there, and fight. Ooh. It worked. That's what it's supposed to look like. Oh, that's a hundred times better, Andy. Let's get this in the oven and move on. Entree ready in 15 minutes. I'm cooking some wheat starch. This is going to be used for my taro nest. I need to steam the taro until it's very soft, and then you can knead the two together with some butter into it. OK, let's start doing the eggs. Now I need to smoke my eggs. I really need at least seven to eight minutes to get a good smoky flavor. And then I still have to make my celeriac puree. Careful, Chris. I wish I had an extra 10 minutes to do this. Might be falling behind a little bit here, so I gotta pick up the pace. I'm working on my mole poblano. Maybe just a hint more salt. I'm a little stressed out right now. The poblano mole is supposed to have a smoky flavor, but you need sweetness and acid. So it's a lot of tasting and balancing as you go. I need some garlic. It's a challenge. Oh, my goodness. They only have 10 minutes left. Next up is the sabayon. Sabayon time. Oh, way, yep. If I stop whisking here, ah, this whole sauce is going to break apart. Oh, Looking good, Andy. Keep going, keep going, keep going. This taro egg is extremely technical. You have to hold the basket at just the right level so that the oil is only frying the taro, but not frying the egg. It has to be done perfectly. Five minutes! On. Entree yeah. up in five minutes! Keep going, keep going. Come on, guys. Oh. It's alright. Hey, guys. It's... Whew. It's worried about here. Oh, Taya's plating. I'm pushing as hard as I can. There's a lot of ambitious cooking happening right now. They really need to hustle. I need to let the venison cook till the very last second. It's hard to watch. It really is. Yeah, this looks okay. That's just incredible. My taro nest eggs look great. 
The duck breast is the star of the show, and it has to be cooked to a perfect medium rare. So the duck breast is coming right now. It looked beautiful. Oh, oh beautiful. Let's see if these are done. up for tasting is Andy's. A lobster roll on a compressed shoe bun with salt and vinegar chips and a white wine savillon. I love the presentation. He has basically taken apart the lobster roll, put it back together again, but in a beautiful way. I've never seen a lobster roll quite like this. The savillon is beautiful. It's very light, very ethereal. The lobster is cooked to perfection. Unfortunately for me, I feel like he cheapened the dish by putting a shoe pastry underneath it. It feels more like an appetizer than a main course. I think had he put something in the shoe pastry, a little bit of cheese or a lemon zest, it would have just tipped it over the edge for me. But otherwise, the lobster is beautifully cooked, and the savillon sauce, that balance of acidity, creaminess, nicely seasoned, absolute delight. Next up is Taya's entree, a venison tenderloin with roasted turnips, pepita verde, and a poblano mole. I like the presentation. It is very modern, beautiful colors. I think it's very clean, it's very direct. I like the two sauces. It is captivating the way she plated this dish. I find the venison underdone in the center but it is very moist and has great natural flavor. The mole, it is big and bold, but balanced. It has the acidity there. And then the salsa verde is so much more subtle and creamy and as a counterpoint to it. I love the balance game that she's playing here. You know, you can serve venison rare, but rare venison is very, very strong. And the sauce has to compensate it with something fruity and sweet. This combination do not justify the cook on the venison. The last entree up for tasting is Christopher's. A seared duck breast served with a beet jus, smoked egg in a taro nest, and a celeriac puree. I like the plating. I love the egg with a taro root nest. I love the gold leaf. Every element here is interesting. Beautiful sauce on a beautifully cooked duck. I can't wait to cut into this. I am really intrigued by this egg. It has to be medium, creamy center. There's a lot riding on that smoke bake. Hey, wow. look at that. That perfect. is perfect. That is perfect. The cook on Christopher's duck is perfect. It's well seared, it's well seasoned, it's well rested. The egg, I think, is sensational, that custardy center. Every element here is done to perfection. Overall, a very ambitious dish. It really worked. Taya, do you really think you belong in this competition? I certainly have my doubts. I only ask because if you continue to cook this way, you certainly belong here. Oh my god, thank you so much. The noodles are perfect. You can tell they're handmade, they're very tender. Oh, I needed that. It's excellent. Thank you, Chef. The home cooks are fighting for their lives in a difficult replication challenge. Both Taya and Kim are struggling with the hen's egg that will top their squid ink pasta. Does she break her egg? Yeah. It doesn't want to peel. It's coming apart. Look at the shake on her. I just want to throw the egg and start again, but I only have one egg, so I got to make it work. Five minutes and five minutes left. Come on, get going. Five minutes. I gotta do my pasta for three minutes to get it perfect. This is all about impeccable time management. If you put your noodles into that water too early, they're gonna get mushy. If they don't go in and have enough time, they're gonna be too al dente. One minute, you have one minute left. Check your plate, make sure you have everything on it. 
It broke. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Heads up! I think we've made it extremely hard on these judges. We all have all the components. It's really going to come down to those minute details. What happened here? The egg. I was going to peel my egg, and for some reason, I went like this to crack it. <laughs> I hope, despite this little crack in the foundation, that inside of this egg is a beautiful liquid center. Fingers crossed. Look at that. That's stunning. If this doesn't bring a smile to your face, Kimberly, nothing will. What happened to the salt? Did you forget the salt? I forgot the salt. Everyone knows that salt and eggs are best friends. What happened? I think I was uh, overwhelmed with the egg being cracked, and you lost focus. I just forgot that one touch. Hello, Kimberly. Hi, Chef. Well, let's see how the overall taste is here. The foundation flavors here are very good. Unfortunately, the noodle is under. I hope for your sake that we get a chance to taste another pasta from you again. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Matt! How are you doing, Chef Alvin? Looks like you got everything there. Some nice caramelization on the mushrooms. Good amount of pasta. I hope to see sunshine leaking out of this egg. And... I can see the sunshine, but it's not so runny, Matt. You're probably off about a minute. How long did you cook it for? For six minutes. Well, it still tastes good. How are you feeling? I know that my egg was a little over, but next time I make it, hopefully it'll be perfect. Chives here, not only are there too many, they're very thick. You need to go a little cleaner on that cut. And that's a minor detail, but it's, it's an important detail. The flavor is awesome. Thank you, Chef. Really awesome. Thank you. You know, Matt, this is not a perfect bowl of noodles but it does convey to me that you have a lot of potential. Hopefully you live to see another day in this kitchen. Thank you very much, Chef. Hello, May. Hi, Chef Michael. How are you feeling? I think I might have overcooked my egg. What makes you think your egg is overcooked, May? I cooked it for the same amount of time that Matt did. I also did it for six minutes as well. I see. Yeah. You know, if the egg is cold, it takes a little longer. Depending whether it's room temperature, it may take a little less time. The size of the egg. Let's see if this egg is golden, rich, and runny. Look at that. It's pretty good to me. Relieved? Relieved. <laughs> Did you hit the egg with a little salt? No, I hit the noodles with the salt. It's always that last bright pop of flavor. Never forget again. <laughs> You'll never forget again is yeah. right. So what am I expecting to taste when I dig into this jet black noodle? You're gonna get the garlic, the butter, and the olive oil, as well as the chives. This tastes great. Flavors are there. I can taste the garlic. I can taste the lemon. Be proud. Thank you, Chef Alvin. A 
Hello to you. Chef Michael? Your egg is not the prettiest. has a little crack here. Yeah, Chef, it does. Do you struggle getting that shell off? I put it too long in the ice water bath, and then it made it difficult to uh, peel afterwards. Let's see. Oh, my God. That looks perfect. <laughs> Thank God. Right, too. Is that uh, beginner's luck? I knew I needed it about five, five and a half minutes. I took it out at five and a half, and fingers crossed. Maybe a bit of both. Yes. Thank you. <sighs> the color is jet black. It looks beautiful. It's deep. There's almost a sense of mystery to it. Taya, do you really think you belong in this competition? I've certainly had my doubts. I only ask because if you continue to cook this way, you certainly belong here. Oh my god, thank you so much. The noodles are perfect. You can tell they're handmade, they're very tender. Oh, I needed that. It's excellent. Thank you, Chef. I'm not the most confident. I might be going home because of that stupid soft-boiled egg. For what they did in that amount of time, that pressure, I'm impressed. At this point, it's really anyone's game. We all made mistakes. And we know our answer. Let's go and share it with the home cooks. Taking everything into account, one home cook stood out from the rest. The best squid ink pasta was made by Taya. Here you go, Taya. Thank you. Oh my gosh, that's so exciting. Congratulations, Taya. Please head on up to the gallery. I never would have dreamed in a million years that I would be top 10 at MasterChef Canada. Now for the bad news. We had to consider every single missing grain of salt, every overcooked egg, and every undercooked strand of pasta. Ultimately, we felt that one home cook fell just a little short of the others. We have no other choice but to say goodbye to... Kimberly. Matt and May, please head on up to the gallery. Kimberly, we know that this isn't the result that you'd been hoping for, but there is a bright side. Your seven-year-old daughter, Nevea, will be so thrilled to welcome you home. She got to see her extremely talented mother excel on the national stage, and that's quite an achievement. So please come up here and say goodbye to us. Thank you. Don't you ever stop cooking. It's a bittersweet. It's a bittersweet, but in order to grow, you have to learn. And you know, I learned a lot. It was a really awesome experience, and I would not change anything. This isn't the last of me. I'll be back. <laughs> Two eggs to work with. That's one for poaching, one for the sauce, and once again, no room for error. Wow, you pulled it off. But there's nothing more disappointing, May, than cutting into a poached egg and not having that beautiful golden yolk ooze out. Wow. That is, that just leaves me speechless. Let's see if it tastes as good as it looks. You obviously added vinegar to the water. Did you add any salt to the water? I did, I did. It's a bit bland. And there's another issue. You can see that the hollandaise is just slightly too thin. It's just washing off of that egg, and that's critical. And I think that bacon makes up for the lack of salt on the egg. That's a pretty solid performance by you. Thank you. I didn't get a perfect critique. I'm still feeling really unsure. On 
visual inspection, I'm afraid sauce is all over the place. Also, I see a bit of splitting. But what is the most important thing about Nick's Benedict? The runny yolk. Look at that. That's a beauty. You know, the bacon, I would say slightly undercooked. Very important technical mistake. How you feeling? I feel really emotional. There's a lot riding on this for me. Um, I know everyone's sacrificed everything, but mine just has a ticking time clock to it with my mom. With her diagnosis of early onset Alzheimer's, every time that I'm away from her could be the next phone call. She doesn't remember who I am. This time away from her is definitely a challenge. Time is precious for you, isn't it? It really is, so I need to be here to do my best to bring it home for me and my mom. At the end of the day, you do what you got to do to get through this competition, and it all boils down to what is happening on this plate. There are a few challenges here, I see. This hollandaise is broken. Flavor is awesome. If I close my eyes and I pretend that it's made properly, just never turn your back on a holidays. I won't do that again. I'm thinking about my mom. Everything I've worked hard to do is almost slipping out of my fingers. Hi there, Trevor. Chef Michael. Look, I think the eggs, Benny, looks pretty darn good. Good shape to the egg. What looks to be a good consistency on the holidays. Nice little browning on the bacon. Look at that. That looks like one happy eggs Benny. Let's give it a little taste. Very good. Thank you, Sean. Great consistency. Very, very light, seasoned well. I think it could have done just with a little more acidity, a touch more juice. But overall, it's uh, very good indeed. Thank you very much. Thanks, Trevor. What happened? I broke my hollandaise sauce. Very easy to do. Unfortunately, it's happened to you at the worst possible time. The cook on the bacon looks pretty good. Cook on the egg feels good. Let's see what happens inside. Your yolk is overcooked. I know I'm cooking again. It's not over yet for you here. You still have that fight. Absolutely. Are you ready to fight? <sighs> ah, no, don't you. What's he doing? I cracked my yolk. I don't have eggs left at this point. That's really bad. This is a test of multitasking. You have to be looking at three different egg applications all at once. This is exciting. Remember, they only have five eggs. They cannot make any mistakes whatsoever. Michael, what's a perfect soft boil egg? Room temperature egg. Water that's brought up to a roaring boil, turned down, then with a spoon, just gently lower that egg into it, and then it's timing from there on in. I have a hard time keeping it simple, so cooking eggs, I'd rather cook what lays the eggs. The trick with making an omelet perfectly, get the fry pan on medium heat, with a little bit of whole butter and a little bit of olive oil. Kevin is a little bit of a slow poke on this. He doesn't have the same speed and agility that Andrew has. 
Omelets are always on the menu at Andrew's house. I make omelets weekly. And Cody, he keeps looking at the clock. He is super sensitive about his time management because that has let him down time and time again. One minute goes by like one second. You blink and half the challenge is gone. Five minutes! Cody's working on his omelet. I get my omelet in the pan, and immediately I know the pan is too hot. I've got brown on my omelet. This could cost me my second chance. My omelet comes out and it looks good. I should have enough time to poach my egg. I don't see a problem doing a poached egg, because I do that a lot. Poach egg, I think, is the most difficult to do. You gotta get that water, not rapidly boiling, simmering. And then you gotta create that vortex. And then, of course, the critical splash of vinegar. When it's finished, the egg yolk has to be oozing, and the egg white has to be firm. Three minutes! I'm standing there, I've got lots of time left. I go to crack my poached egg. Ah, no, don't you. What's he doing? I crack my yolk. I don't have egg left at this point. That's really bad. Look at Kevin's poached egg. He's just lifted it out, and he, he uh, is that's not unlikely. happy. I think he broke his yolk. Oh, my God. Kevin's poach is a mess. Don't give up yet, Kevin. I'm hoping that things aren't going well for Andrew and Cody either. Just give me the apron now, because I got this. Oh, he's going to drop it. He's going to drop it. Cody can't keep his hands still. I've never seen his hands shake so much. Cody! 30 seconds! They put the top boiled egg into the cold water to stop the cooking instantly. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, put it in. 2, 1. Hands up! There's a lot of color happening here. Looks like you had your heat on the pan a little bit too high. What do you think? I knew that I had left it on the heat a little bit too long for the outside, but... Hmm. It's nice and moist. It's a good omelet. Thank you, Chef. Look at this. If this were a steak, it would be a perfect medium rare. Some people might say it's a little too runny, but this is what you want in a classic omelet with French technique. Hi, Cody. Chef Alvin. What do I expect to see when I cut into this? You should see the white set and firm, and the yolk should run freely. It should be smooth and velvety. Well, the yolk is perfect. Thank you, Chef. The white, I think you nailed it. Well done. Thank you. Kevin. Yes, yeah, Chef. How are we here? You have absolutely destroyed poached egg. Broke the yolk on it. That is an example of probably the worst looking poached egg. I'm afraid the yolk is firm all the way through, and the white, it's all over the place. Yeah. It's not your lucky day. Andrew, there's a lot writing on this egg, isn't there? It's forever. Looks good. There's a little bit of the egg yolk there on the inside edge, you see it there? And you have the same happening right here, you see? Yes. <gasps> Which indicates to me a few seconds too long, maybe. Thank you, Andrew. Cody. Well, let's take a look, shall we? Gorgeous. That's like the morning sunrise right there. Maybe just a little hair under there on the egg white, but just maybe seconds. Well done, Cody. At this stage, it comes down to whether you're over or undercooked by 10 seconds. The line is that fine. This is wow. I love the different textures. You got the crunch coming from the cracker. You got the silky smooth from the sea urchin. And you spend all that time in the front line. This dish could put you at the front.
of this line. Thank you. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Hands up! <laughs> oh, that, that last one went long. <laughs> that was an intense cook. I can't believe I actually pulled off three types of dim sum in one hour. This is a really good first cook. Uh, I'm happy with the presentation. Everything is clean. It's exactly what I wanted. I ran into some problems. My mousse didn't set, but uh, feeling pretty crappy. <laughs> Andy, please bring up your dish. All that's going through my head is, Andy, did you overcook that lobster? Did you? So today I made a lobster and smoked oyster chowder with a buttermilk biscuit. That certainly is a buttermilk biscuit. <laughs> it's huge. The presentation of the dish, great quantity of lobster in there, absolutely exquisite. Look at that, dripping with all that goodness. <laughs> the lobster is spot on. This has great sophistication, great flavors, great balance. It really is a dish that I'd expect to eat at a restaurant. Well, thank you, chef. Well done, Andy, thank you. Thank you. Oh. Dora, please come up to the front with your dish. I did my take on a po' boy, and I did uh, my blueberry barbecue sauce with the beef cheeks, and then I made a nice sour slaw. Do you know flavors? but you really need to work on presentation as well. You know that, right? Heard, Chef, yes. This needs to taste better than it looks. Oh, there's good news and bad news. Okay. The good news is that that pressure cooker is no longer your nemesis. Yay. The flavor that you have in the beef cheeks is really amazing. It's very intense, great kick to it. But the bad news is the bread. You should have made your own bread if you could have. Something a little more elevated. I, yes. And this season is no joke. Nope. No, Look no, at the it talent is not. behind you. Oh, yes. I just wish you had done more. Flavor is king, but I made a sandwich and they didn't really like that that much. Jeremy, please come up to the front. It's a monkfish sinigang. On the bottom is a tamarind and balsamic glaze and some watermelon radish for garnish. Amazing presentation. Thank you, chef. I can't wait to sink my teeth in this. Everything is there. You got the fruitiness coming from the tamarind and the extra layer of flavor coming from the balsamic. Now, the monkfish is a poor man's lobster. Man's lobster. Okay? And I can tell you, this is a rich man's dish. Yes. Thank you, chef. Thank you. <laughs> Christopher, please bring your dish up to the front. Chef, today I made a trio of Cantonese dim sum. It's been served with a sriracha and lemon mustard aioli. That's amazing. It looks like you've come a long way since the last time you were in this kitchen. Thanks, chef. Delicious. Great flavors inside. The only comment I would have to make is increase the flavors within the dumpling. It's a little bit on the bland side. But overall, really amazing effort. I know how difficult it is to make dim sum, and you only had one hour. So you're more than just a pastry chef. I've worked really hard these last couple of years to really improve myself in savory and sweet. It shows, Christopher. Thank you, Chef. Taya, you're next. I made crispy chicken basted in pork fat and then a roasted chili sauce. Presentation-wise, wow. Good acidity in there. Thank you, Chef. And I tell you, that balances that smokiness in the chili. The chicken, not so great, but you got some things right on this plate. You made a great sauce, but that is not an excuse for dry chicken. Andrew, please bring up your dish. I'm confident in my dish, but I'm still terrified about what's inside that egg. I 
made shakshuka, which is eggs in purgatory. It's a traditional Mediterranean dish. I charred peppers and onions and my tomatoes, and then, of course, the egg. Let's try this egg. It's gonna be the moment of truth. Everything rides on this egg. I'm just praying that it's okay. Oh, oh look at that. <laughs> you are out of purgatory and on your way to heaven by the looks of it. Oh my goodness. I would say pretty much mission accomplished. The egg, spot on. The flavors are big, bold. So well done. Thank you, Chef. Marissa, you're up next. I made uh, meat and potatoes and surf and turf. The meat and potatoes is chicken thigh with sweet potato noodles. And my surf and turf is tempurid squid and pork belly. You have a lot going on on one plate here. It looks a little clunky. The pork belly is a little tough, and the skin is actually not rendered down. The flavor, though, shines right through. If I can give you any advice here. Yes, chef. Do less, just do it better. Gotcha. Marisa. Chef Michael. This is the? Uh, tempura squid with a black vinegar vinaigrette. You know, the foundation here has a really great flavor. Thank you, chef. I love what you did with these sweet potato noodles. That coconut sauce really elevates them, and they have a wonderful bite. But the tempura batter needs a little bit more color to it, a little bit more crisp. The chicken, I think, too, could have just a touch more robustness in the flavor. You're well on the way, but did it hit that superstar mark? Right. The smallest mistakes can send you to the bottom. And I made a couple of mistakes. Andre. Please bring your dish to the front. I made a pickled guava skin and uni butter coconut pasta. I mean, this is a complete change from what I saw last time. Beautiful presentation. I love the colors. I love the natural feel. I really love that. This is wow. I love the different textures. You got the crunch coming from the cracker. You got the silky smooth from the sea urchin. Yeah. And then that pickle gives it a bit of acidity, gives it a bit of freshness. You got the full balance in here. And you spend all that time in the front line. This dish could put you at the front of this line. Thank you. Oh my God. Because it worked, I didn't think I was ready to come back here, but I'm glad I did. I'm just, I'm proud. Barry, you're next. Chef, I made for you today a Wagyu beef tartare with a smoked oyster aioli. It's ambitious, but I think you're ambitious. And I think that shows in this dish, which I like. Seasoning is terrific. The creaminess of the smoked oyster aioli, I think adds a wonderful decadent richness to it. Really well presented dish and a great comeback. Thank you, Chef. Well done. May, you're next. I made a poached salmon with a Thai green curry sauce, crispy salmon skin. Well, the presentation, I must admit, beautiful. Flakes nicely and it's still juicy. It's a very good dish. Well composed, nice cook on the salmon. You did well. Thank you, Chef Elvin. Jen, you're up next. Today I made for you a butter-basted strip sirloin, a potato pave, a wild mushroom demi-glaze with some pickled pearl onion petals. Looks like someone's been spending a lot of time in the kitchen. As much as I possibly can with two children. <laughs> Delicious, really, really great. The only criticism I would give you is I think it needs something to cut through the richness of the pave and the steak. But overall, it looks like a finale dish already. Thank you, chefs. Trying to keep it together this season, but I feel incredible. <sighs> April Lee, please bring up your dish. I am presenting you with a pineapple rum coconut curd on a jaconade biscuit. So, April Lee, by the looks of this dessert, I think that you probably missed the mark. What happened? 
Um, you know, conceptually, I, I had it all in my head. I thought it was all going really well, and then it, it didn't, and things were really spiraling out of control for me. I really, at the last 20 seconds, got this on the plate. Well, let me taste it. The presentation's not good. I know. But the flavor is awesome. Thank you. Really, really awesome. Thank you, Chef. Beautiful acidity, great control, great textures. Just that presentation, that's the only thing. It's a big thing. It's a big thing. These competitors are so fierce. They are here to win it. There's no room for someone that isn't bringing their A game. The competition right now is insane. I feel like it's a bit of a coin flip. I saw one or two disappointments. You know I know how to cook. I can do more than a sandwich. I'm a little bit worried. I'm just telling myself that I'm not going home. I'm not going home. We obviously knew that you were good, but your abilities are beyond what we ever expected. But one of you showed a level of growth and ingenuity that left us stunned. And that cook is... Andre. Oh, yeah. Come on, buddy. Awesome work. Yes. <laughs> Winning the first challenge is like a big boost of confidence. Your uni amuse bouche was the most impressive dish of the night. And that means that you now have a massive advantage next week. It's really good to be back. Eric still hasn't started rolling his egg roll wrapper yet. When are those egg rolls going in? I gotta roll those out soon, man. Yeah. I'm making my egg roll wrappers from scratch, and I'm definitely starting to panic. This is gonna take me longer than I thought. I don't know where the time went, and I spent way too much time helping my team. I really want to prove to my dad that I don't belong as an engineer, and I do belong working in the kitchen. This is the only chance I have. The home cooks are working in two teams to create a special family dinner, while their loved ones gather in the MasterChef Canada dining room. 30 minutes left. The blue team struggles frantically to get their short ribs under cover. It looks like Kayla's having a hard time getting the pressure cooker sealed up. That one's on, that one's not. The back two aren't. Swap, swap. No, swap. Get them locked, get them locked. Lock. So hot. I got it. You got it? They're good. Kayla, you're yeah. working on the braised beef short ribs? Yes, chef. Terrific, and this is a home favorite, obviously. It absolutely is. I'm going to try and elevate it. What's in the pot right now? We have red wine, beef stock, thyme, garlic, rosemary, onion, carrot, fennel. Sounds delicious. Do you want to get that flavor of that wine into that beef? Absolutely. So you have to cook off that alcohol. I hope you've done that sufficiently. It's going to be reduced enough. Time is ticking. Thank you, chef. Did you cook off the alcohol smell? A little bit, not all the way. Eric is doing mason plus for both Kayla and Mike. So he's the human food processor? Yeah. And really, he's doing the most complicated dish. Deep fried egg roll and duck fat. Wow. Now that is going to really be tasty. I like that. So one of my concerns here with the red team is that they're cooking cassava and plantain. Those two can be kind of bland if they're not seasoned properly. Here, try this. Marita gives me a little taste. Is it Master Chef Canada quality stuff? No. It's kind of yucky and bland and pasty. If Marita's um, going to turn this into a restaurant quality dish, she's definitely have a lot of work in front of her. Not everybody has tried cassava, and it's going to be a risky dish, but my mom taught me how to do this. It's one of my favorite things. Marita, so tell me about the theme behind this menu you're making. We're coming up with a cried chicken. And for the start, instead of potatoes, we're going to do cassava and green plantain, some roasted corn with a nice chili lime butter on top. And this is a cassava, right? That's right. So this is kind of a fusion menu, a little bit of Canadiana and island all mixed together? Yes, and a little bit of Tamara and Marita as well. This is going to be a roasted pear and butternut squash soup uh, with a bourbon mirepoix at the bottom. This is a soup I must have made for my wife, Lauren, like at least 20, 30 times. Hi, Mike. Hey, how's Chef, how you doing? How's chef? your soup coming? It's coming along. My mirepoix is almost caramelized down there. I'm getting good color. And then it's going to get probably that whole bottle of bourbon. A whole bottle of bourbon? Well, it's going to reduce right down. It's going to get a good sweetness. And then you see the pear has been caramelized, so it's just going to pop the skins off at the end. They're going to get pureed with the butternut squash that's in here. Next time, get a bigger bottle. <laughs> Well, listen, I'm really impressed with Eric right now. He's actually making handmade 
egg roll wrapper. I think he's doing that for his father and his grandfather. I'm super nervous for the, my family and the judges to eat my egg rolls. It's a lot of people I want to impress that room. Chef Alvin and my dad and my grandpa. I want to show that I've evolved and I really have what it takes. Eric, you know, I see you working like a jackrabbit, but this time I see control speed, which is good. You know, you're learning. You are doing uh, egg roll. Yes, Chef. But don't they have ready spring roll dough in the uh, pantry? Oh, it's too easy then, Chef. <laughs> so are you creating your own filling? There's like just vegetables. Yes. Because uh, usually we'd always have meat because my dad only eats meat. But in this circumstance, for a side dish, I think it's appropriate to have just vegetables. He doesn't eat any vegetable at all? Uh, no vegetables. You're going back to your heritage, which is very important. You're doing good. You know what? we got to get that corn on. Michael Alvin, what do you think is happening in the red team right now? Well, Look like panic is starting to settle in. Oh, shit. This is too fresh corn. You know what? I'm just taking all the husks off. It's, it's... Yeah, yeah, do it. Whatever is easy, Tamara. Time's running out. We need to be able to at least put something on the plate. Tamara's actually charring the corn on top of the burner. It's a bad idea. Ah, that's a really bad idea. That soot that comes off the flame is disgusting sure. to eat. 10 minutes. You have 10 minutes left. Very easily right now, this could all slip away from the blue team. The soup isn't really finished. You OK? Yeah. Eric still hasn't started rolling his egg roll wrapper yet. When are those egg rolls going in? I got to roll those out soon, yeah. man. I'm making my egg roll wrappers from scratch, and I'm definitely starting to panic. This is going to take me longer than I thought. I don't know where the time went, and I spent way too much time helping my team. Mike, what are you working on? Uh, making the chips now. That's garnish. I need the mushrooms in strips like these, the king oysters. Okay. One chance to impress my family, and I really don't want to let them down. Eric? Whoa, 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 no, no, like, they need to be Matchstick. This might take a while. I really want to prove to my dad that I don't belong as an engineer and I do belong working in the kitchen. This is the only chance I have. Five minutes. I want to see some plating. Mm. Start putting things on our tray? Yeah, let's go. We have to at least put something on the plate. No food means we're in a pressure test. If I have to go into a pressure test against Marita, then one of us is going home. Final minute. Come on. OK, I'm going to start plating these. I need that last pressure cooker now. Come on, Eric. Wow, these look ugly. I have to cut them in half. Can't get 12. Okay, plate that fucking soup and we need the short ribs on. I've just got to finish the soup. i got to season it. 10, 9, Bring it over. 8, Let's go. 7, Pop it on. 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, Wait. 1. Hands up. Uh, holy moly. The home cooks have just barely managed to plate a family-style meal for their loved ones. Last 30 seconds, I'm cutting egg rolls in half and just throwing them on the plate. It's not how I wanted to finish my plate. I wanted more garnish. I wanted with some finesse. And this is like another chance I just blew. It just really sucks. I'm happy enough with my soup, but at this point, I should be like, this is the best friggin' soup I've ever made in my life. And I just don't know if I'm at that point because I didn't get to taste it. The judges now join the families to sample the red team's karai chicken, cassava and plantain with tomato relish, and roasted corn with chili lime butter. And the blue team's short ribs with parsnip chips and figs, butternut squash and pear soup, and vegetable egg rolls. Please serve yourselves. It looks wonderful, doesn't it? Yes. The judges will take the family's feedback into account, but ultimately, they will choose the winning team. Right now, they're tasting our food, and it, that is so scary. How are you enjoying the meal? I'm a sucker for the short ribs. The beef is one of my favorites. Good tenderness, especially for that short amount of time. They really pulled off. Just cut into the uh, beef? Yes. Oh, wow. Very tasty. I like, I like meat like that. Now how about the soup? The soup had a lot of flavor in it. The soup is amazing. I think that's probably what Mike made. Um, it's one of my favorite things that he always makes. How do you like the egg roll? It's very good. Wow. Mm. He doesn't eat vegetables. Is that right? Mm -hmm. So I need to get him here more often. The egg roll is good. I, I think that um, it's got a lot of batter to it, but the flavors are really good inside of it. My sister is definitely getting down on that cassava. She's probably getting down on that chicken. Cassava's kind of like sweet and buttery. That's what I love about it. The chicken's got a lot of power to it, and it's, it's got a lot of flavor. I love it. It's, uh, it's fantastic. It's beautiful. I love the crispy skin and the sauce that comes from It's really nice. And I'm a sucker for cilantro. What about the sweet corn? Uh, actually, I haven't got to the sweet corn yet. Our families are probably talking about how proud they are of us. 
you auditioned I did. to come on MasterChef Canada. I did. I'm living vicariously through through my sister right now. So her, um, her dream coming true is my dream coming true. We'd like to give you the opportunity to thank the people who cooked this delicious meal for you today. It's really scary walking into the dining room. I want to look at everyone's plates to see what they've eaten, but then I noticed that our corn wasn't eaten, so right away I think, oh, poop. I'm not too sure if we're gonna win this challenge or not. I'm happy to see my family enjoy the meal and to see them experience this journey with me, but there's like a feeling inside of me that just knows the egg rolls weren't perfect. I know they were probably the weakest dish. I'm just disappointed. It's a super proud moment, but I'm worried about the scene. Before we get back to business, we'll go back to the MasterChef Canada kitchen and give you an opportunity to say goodbye. Thank you. Mm, gonna miss you. Seeing my family definitely adds added pressure. I really don't want to let them down. They've seen me get this far, and to not come home with a grand prize, it's absolutely unacceptable. Oh, good luck, Tweety, OK? Yeah, the whole yellow, whole My husband's last words were, you're not coming home until you have the title. And today gives me motivation. Today's the first day that I actually believe that I can win. I love you. Love you, Papa. I love you, too. She just told me, she's like, just mm. keep cooking. You've made it this far. Like, come on, you're so close. Mm. Mm. Love you. Thank Bye, you. love you. Love you. <laughs> Eric starts to cry, and I did not expect that from him. So it was a very cool moment to see him have emotion. How did it feel to cook for your families after all these weeks? Absolutely amazing. Fantastic. Amazing chef. Amazing chef. Well, you did an amazing job. They were impressed and very proud of you. And so were we. We've tasted all your dishes and got plenty of feedback. Now we need a moment to discuss. It's a very tough one. Yeah, there were some standouts on both sides, but... Two negatives, one yeah, in each camp. Negative. But you so take those two negative ones out, it, it, it makes camps, it very they, if they really, It's a level it's playing field right. right now. This is getting really hard. This is gonna be a tough decision, guys. I'm torn, yeah, which was so damn close. Let's do it. This was the toughest decision we had to make so far on MasterChef Canada. Both teams did an outstanding job. Red team, your corn was not quite cooked enough, but everything else was delicious. Your spicy fried chicken thighs was a hit with all the families. Blue team, you knocked it out of the park with your short ribs. Everyone's family was raving about them. In fact, we had positive comments on all your dishes. But you clearly ran out of time on the egg rolls. The filling was delicious, but the dough was a little too thick. Eric, we know you'll be very hard on yourself about this, but you ran into trouble because you were helping your teammates. It was an amazing collaboration. And just so that you know, your family loved the egg rolls. In fact, you even got your dad to eat vegetables. <laughs> wow. Good job. You all did yourselves proud, but one team had a slight edge with their presentation and flavors. And that team was... the red team. Congratulations, Marita and Tamara. Thank you, Chef. Thank you. Did you get an egg yolk in there? I did. Her whites are contaminated. She has egg yolks in her whites. Oh. This is one of the hardest egg dishes that you'll ever have to master. A delicate and savory cheese souffle. Souffle is very hard. It's very technical. It's very challenging. You have three eggs to work with. You'll need all three yolks for the base and all three whites to make sure that it rises perfectly. So once again, you only have one chance to pull it off. You have only 30 minutes to make your souffle. Some professional chefs take years to perfect the souffle. 
I have only 30 minutes. We want you to bring it to the front as soon as it's ready. Souffles must be served and eaten immediately. So we need to judge yours at its highest peak. If your souffle does not rise, your dream will fall along with it. Now please head to your station. I should be top six. I earned my spot. I've competed every single day. Alice hasn't. Everything is resting in that one souffle. Are you ready? Yes, yes chef. chef. Your time starts now. Oh my God. Let's go, ladies. What? So many things can go wrong in a souffle. Every step is critical. They only have three eggs. And the first step is they have to separate them, the whites from the yolks. They cannot break those yolks and contaminate the egg white. Otherwise, those egg whites just won't whip. There are many ways to separate an egg white from egg yolk. Miranda used her hand, and that's exactly what I would do. With three eggs, no mistakes, use your hand. That's definitely a home-cooked mistake to use the eggshells to separate your whites from your yolks, because those eggshells are like tiny little teeth. They're very jagged. A souffle relies upon the whisked egg whites to rise that whole dish. So if you don't whip your egg whites enough, it will be flat. It's do or die, and I can't go home right now. I have too much riding on this, so this has to be perfect. So I think what they should be doing next is starting to prepare their souffle base, measuring out their dry ingredients, getting a pan on the stove top, melting down some butter, adding the flour to that butter, making your base roux, and then slowly add the milk to that pan, whisking and stirring constantly. I want to prove to the judges that they were not wrong in bringing me back and that I deserve a spot here. Miranda's batter looks very silky and smooth. Unfortunately for Alice, her batter looks kind of lumpy, almost like scrambled egg. What's probably happened there is she has added her egg yolks to her base flour and butter mixture when it was still too hot, and the egg yolks have started to cook. In essence, scrambling. Miranda is actually starting to whip her egg whites, I believe, by hand. Look, getting a little bit of volume. I've whipped a lot of egg whites in my day. I know that I have to whip it to a medium stiff peak. Nice job, Miranda. Good job, looks great. Savory souffles are even harder to make than sweet souffles, especially a cheese souffle for the simple reason cheese is very dense and heavy. That's why this is ultra tricky. It's just not whipping. Alice is trying to whip her whites, and they are not stiffening up. These souffles are going to take 12 to 15 minutes in order to achieve that beautiful height and that beautiful rise that we're looking for. Oh, my God, it's not whipping. I don't know what happened, but I see yolk in my egg whites. Did you get an egg yolk in there? I did. Her whites are contaminated. She has egg yolks in her whites. Oh. Look, look, look. Miranda's souffle is going in the oven. Whip it by hand. Turn it off and whip it by hand. Alice got yolk in her egg white. If I was in that position, I would really want someone to come help me. Oh, my goodness. Look at this. Miranda's helping her. Miranda's looking to help her. I mean, this is it's classy. Get violent. One of these home cooks is going home, and Miranda is helping Alice. And she only has three minutes to get that souffle in the oven, or Actually, it's over. those whites are stiffening up much better than I thought. My goodness. You have to admire both of these home cooks, you know? Miranda, on one hand, is trying to help Alice, and Alice refuses to throw the towel in. Second chances do not come that easily. And I came back here to cook. I am not going to give up. Right now, I was just hoping that the souffle turns out OK. At the 30-minute mark, Miranda and Alice must present their dish. But if one of their souffles is done before that, it will be judged immediately. Once you take it out of the oven, within minutes, if not seconds, it will start to deflate. Please, souffle, please rise. The thing with souffles is you don't know if you did it right till the very end. Alice, with souffles, 
It can take a second, but it, it doesn't matter because in one second it won't be, and in the next second you have beautiful puffy goodness. Okay? Thank you, Miranda. Tell that souffle to rise. Five minutes! You have five minutes. You have to bring your souffle to the front. If you think it's time, you take it out. You don't want it too brown, right? Miranda's bringing away to take her souffle out. Oh, my goodness. <sighs> That one on the right looks nice. Flat, 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 flat one. one. I'm ready, chef. It's uh, raised nicely. Great looking souffle. Look at that. When it shakes like that, that just shows it is so light and fluffy. That's why they don't last for long. No. <laughs> I can smell the cheesiness. Very rich and flavorful in, in, in by the nose. It's time to taste. Okay. After three grueling cooks, you absolutely nailed this. Oh my god. Look at that. Oh, thank you, Jeff Michael. Oh. Miranda, your mother is incredibly proud of you right now. Those were the best words I could ever hear after such a grueling day. One minute, you have one minute left. One minute. My souffle actually rose. Let's go, Alice. You can do this. Wow. There you go, Alice. There you go. <sighs> Against all odds, Alice, look what you did. Is that better than you thought? Could have been better, I think. Not perfect, but it rose. <laughs> Amazing. I don't know how you pulled this off. <sighs> the flavor is quite nice. It's not perfect. What is perfect, though, is you did not give up. I did not make a mistake by asking you back. Thank you, Chef. Way to go, Alice. I didn't give up. And even when worse came to worse, I still finished all my dishes. This has been an unforgettable day in the MasterChef Canada kitchen. Miranda, we applaud your character and your magnificent souffle. Please take off your apron and head up to the gallery. I put my everything into this souffle. To just finally be told today that I nailed something. It was just such a great feeling. I know that my mom's always been my number one supporter. All the more reason I have to win this. Miranda has shown a lot of growth, and she's on a fast track to the top. Alice, you displayed extraordinary grace and bravery. It was a delight to have you back in our kitchen, and I wish that we didn't have to say goodbye again quite so soon. Thank you. Amazing once again. challenge today. I came back to show the judges what I can do. It may not have been perfect, but overall, this experience has been life changing. Getting this second chance, it reminds me of how much I enjoy cooking. Woo! Good luck, guys.